The indie video game Hollow Knight received a lot of praise when it first launched back in 2017, with critics quick to point out many of the Metroidvania masterpiece's biggest standout features. Admiration for the game is primarily focused around both Hollow Knight's better than good, it's great, gameplay, and the game's beautifully realized world, Hollow Nest. Both of these halves of the video game whole, gameplay and world, are very well crafted. Hollow Knight's gameplay is excellently backed by tight, responsive combat, a wealth of well-designed enemies to fight, and both unique and familiar gameplay systems. Namely, Hollow Knight's combat charm system, and its somewhat punishing death recovery system that feels oddly familiar. This amazing gameplay is set within the world of Hollow Nest, a sprawling map full of distinct, interconnected areas that can be explored by players, for the most part, at their discretion. Meaning that different players can complete areas, meet characters, and fight bosses in completely different orders, or even miss entire sections of the game. Not to mention that the world is beautifully realized, thanks to Team Cherry's excellent art direction, attention to detail, and transportive musical score. But again, most of these points have already been made, and there are already some very good deep dives about Hollow Knight's complete package by channels like Game Maker's Toolkit, and I would recommend checking those out if you are curious. Despite everything that has already been said about Hollow Knight by games media and others, I still want to praise it more. Because I love this game so much, I decided to create this video to highlight one aspect of Hollow Knight where I still don't think Team Cherry gets enough credit. Voice acting. <laughs> This may seem like a strange topic to focus on, in a game that is doing so many other things right already, especially considering Hollow Knight contains no spoken dialogue in any real-world language. Instead, all words spoken to the player through performance are in the made-up chitterings of Hollow Knight's insect cast, usually triggered as your character goes to talk with them. Any distinguishable dialogue is only conveyed directly to the character through text. However, I believe most of the performances I'm about to list do a lot to inform the player about these strange bugs and their weird nest independently from written dialogue, using just the power of tone and vocal pitch. Before we get to the list, let's compare a scene from Hollow Knight to a game with traditional dialogue spoken in plain English. Bitch can't even swim. Now, this moment of dialogue in a cutscene from last year's Resident Evil 3 Remake doesn't tell the audience much about the situation that they cannot already see for themselves. Nemesis, the big blob of flesh that just jumped in the river, does in fact appear not to be able to swim. However, the dialogue in this scene is given additional meaning through voice actress Nicole Tompkins' delivery which makes clear that heroine Jill Valentine has become confident enough in her capabilities as a fighter to take on whatever nemesis or its creators throw at her. As silly and factually incorrect as the line Bitch can't even swim. actually is, Tompkins' performance elevates this small moment, making it a bit of a narrative turning point for the character within the context of Resident Evil 3 Remake. It is in this line, and the fight after its delivery, where the hunted, Jill, becomes the hunter, a dynamic that plays out throughout the rest of the game. Now, let's see what Hollow Knight voice actress Vicky Pellin can do with only her performance to establish the merchant character, Iselda, in Hollow Knight, dialogue-free. <sighs> I don't know about everybody else, but I love that quick, indistinguishable line. <sighs> Bafanada. So much. Even though I have no idea what Bafanada means, I can immediately get a sense of what Iselda is all about. Namely, she seems to be really bored because, well, she probably should be. Given that she is a merchant, selling goods to no one in an abandoned town. 
even before the player is told this information directly. They kind of just know what Iselda's deal is, with a single sigh and her tone alone. And this reaction is also pretty funny, providing probably the first bit of levity the player experiences in the opening half hour of playing the game, considering the only other character you are likely to meet before is Zelda is the solemn elder bug outside of her shop and maybe her husband. This and other little performances spread throughout Hollow Knight might not seem important, but I think they do a great job of breaking up what could otherwise be a pretty melancholy experience. Hollow Knight, on paper, has a very dark premise. You, the player, are controlling this mute, bug, skull thing that straddles the line between cute and creepy. You're also exploring a kingdom that has long since gone to ruin, and fighting its inhabitants who have also gone to ruin mentally. Fortunately, this depressing journey through Bug Chernobyl is occasionally interrupted, sometimes hilariously, by the 10 best performances I'm about to list. Number 10. Cornifer. A lot of time in Hollow Knight is spent feeling your way around a newly discovered area. You have no idea how to navigate. This experience can be quite stressful, especially in some of Hollow Knight's tougher areas, where save point benches are few and far between. That is until you hear a small voice happily humming, accompanied by the sound of a quill scribbling on parchment. Conifer is a joy to find multiple times throughout the game, both mechanically on account of him selling the player a map of new areas, and because of his upbeat attitude. Number 9, The Grubs. In a similar way to Conifer, I like how the performance of The Grubs serves a real gameplay benefit in alerting the player to their presence. Sometimes, the sound of The Grub is what tells the player there is an adorable secret nearby. Plus, the way they cheer at the night before returning home is a great reward on its own. Way more charming than a normal game collectible. Number 8, Tiso. I didn't know it was possible for a bug to sound condescending until I met Tiso on my first playthrough. Sarah. The wandering naysayer reflects the difficulty of Hollow Knight. He enters Hollow Nest confidently and is quickly defeated. But even on death's door, Tiso still has time for a quick snide comment or two. Sarana. Number 7, The Hunter. While most voices in the game are meant to reflect their character, the hunter's gravelly speech, like his lair and appearance, is a misdirection. <laughs> When I first encountered his creepy cave in the middle of Green Path and saw six eyes peeking out from this hole, I was certain a boss fight awaited. Not a friendly NPC. Even after talking with the hunter, I was nervous to turn my back on this menacing... face? Number 6. Breda. Breda is a character whose personality is largely defined by her little involuntary noises. Oh. After saving her in fungal wastes, Breda will wait for the night in Dirtmouth, where, if the player approaches, she will give a little start and sit up. You don't need to read Breda's hidden diary to know she is crushing on the player character. This small performance makes it obvious. Number 5. Marissa. This lonely bug ghost does not have items to sell or a quest for the night. She just wants someone to hear her sing. Marissa represents an aspect of Hollow Knight lacking in many games, but present in some of my favorites. Ambiance. Her song reflects how the player should feel about an area as moody as the City of Tears. It's not just sad, but longing for a different era that is already long faded. Marissa feels almost like a faded photograph brought to life. You don't have to be told that you were the first to hear her sing in ages through the written dialogue. You can hear it plenty in the performance. 
Number 4, The Dung Defender. Video game boss fights can feel very frustrating, and adding personality to a boss goes a long way in keeping a player engaged with a fight multiple tries in. Oh, no! Dung Defender is so enthusiastic about fighting with the player that you cannot help but enjoy getting your ass kicked by this spinny, smelly boy. His laughter and bravado is an amazing contrast to the screeches and snarls of other bosses, making Dung Defender one of Hollow Knight's most memorable boss fights. Number 3, Zote, the Mighty. Some rare creatures are so weak, so helpless, so inept, and so irritating that hunting them gives no pleasure. Meme Master Zote's grumbling monologues are unexperienced. There is a reason why he is at the center of so much of Hollow Knight's greatest and silliest secrets. Number 2. Hornet One of the few characters in this list not to be voiced by a developer, Hornet is given a lot of chances to talk with the character, both as a boss with distinct, if unintelligible, callouts for her moves, and as a friendly NPC and ally. I think what makes Hornet's performance stand out most is the amount of lines she has. and how much the player has to pay attention to these lines to anticipate her next attack when fighting her boss form. Hornet, more than any other character in Hollow Knight, really does feel like she is speaking in a real language. Even if we the players can't understand it, we feel like we can. There were many other bugs that I wanted to include on this list, but for various reasons, they didn't make the cut. But, I think this is a pretty solid list so far. All that's left is to crown a ruler of Hollow Knight voice acting. The character most brought to life with a deep, rich performance and it's... Iselda. Obviously. Bah, 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 bah,